Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're in North Central Washington on Lake Chelan targeting landlocked Chinook salmon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. This morning we're a few hours northeast of Seattle, Washington on a cold, deep and clear Lake Chelan targeting landlocked Chinook or King Salmon with guides Joe Heinlein and Mark Lippincott, along with Bob Loomis from Max Lure. On Chelan, going deep is the name of the game. So we're gonna run we're gonna run this one out to uh, 120 feet before we attach to the downrigger. Wait. So you want that out of the way? What's that? Nope. Yeah, just get it up like that. And so 120 if you want, grab that one right there. Yep, same story on that side. Yep. You did wash your hands, right? <laughs> So 120, everybody asks me, why do I go 120 feet out behind the boat? Well, I have developed my own uh, outrigger. I call it my outrigger booms, but it's basically just an extension of my downrigger, which allows me to run four rods, you know, 250, 300 feet deep if I need to go that deep. Okay, 120 feet. I make my own weights. Less draw, but less blowback with uh, with the tubes, and then on the set all the way in. And then this spreads it out like so. We're going to target Chinook, uh, mainly Chinook today, but uh, here again I get lake trout while I'm fishing for the kings out here. So. Could be lake trout, could be chinook, could be a burbot, could be cutthroat. I've been catching cutthroat over 200 feet deep in the lake also. So a variety of species that could happen, but mostly I want chinook. So that's what we're after. Yeah, one of the things that, that Joe's been doing is been using the uh, uh, 5.8 inch double D Dodgers on the uh, on basically his back rods, but he's also watch, using watch them rod. on the outside right now, also. I can't but see it. they work extremely well for the Chinook fisheries out here. Okay, what I've done is is a lot of times sometimes it's too much flash, too much attraction, and they don't like it. So occasionally, occasionally I'll put an eyeball on it. And, and just kind of break it up a little bit, you know, kind of my own little trademark. That's about it. We're back about 120 feet on this outside, and then we're gonna go back less than that on the inside rods, therefore we're covering more ground. Covering more ground and also uh, only back this far, when I do make a turn, it keeps me from tangling in my outside rods because they're out farther. Plus I'm using a lighter weight on my outside rod. Uh, than the inside rod. Um, I make my own weights. Matter of fact, these are brand new ones. But uh, I, I like, uh, I don't like the round weight. It's too much blowback when you're fishing, you know, as deep as we fish. We're 195 feet deep right now. And if I had a round ball on, I'm back another 40 feet at this step on the setback. That looks like a lake trout, yeah. And, here, and then if you, to look at the sonar again, here's the shrimp right there behind you. Usually when you see the shrimp like that, there's gonna be fish in the vicinity. Well, the, the shrimp in here are the mysis shrimp. The state put them in here a number of years ago, and I'm talking back in the uh, 40s, 50s, something like that, and because Lake Chelan is, is considered a sterile lake. It's extremely clear. There's no food base in here. So they put them in here for the uh, kokanee. Well, this mysis shrimp basically feed virtually everything on the lake system out here. Lake trout, um, the chinooks, the kokanee, the cutthroat, you know, anything that gets down to the bottom, you've got a, a huge, uh, huge food source. Was that bit on the outside? No. Okay. So if we bump bottom, it's just a slow, slow movement like that. But when we get a bite on a fish, it's quick. And if we get a Chinook bite, sometimes it'll pull that tip halfway to the water. Lake trout tend, tend to be not as aggressive. Right here, right here. Oh, it's 
stay with it. Looks like a laser bite. That was a laser bite. We had leakage. Yeah. <laughs> he, didn't get, he didn't get the bait off, there's no way. Yeah. Welcome back to Lake Chelan. I'm Justin Wolf. We're with Lake Chelan Adventures, trolling smile blades on homemade trolling flies behind Double D Dodgers for often finicky Chinook salmon. At its deepest, Chelan is almost 1,500 feet deep, but we're only fishing around the 200 foot mark because that's where the fish are. So what we're trying to do continually is, is following the contour of the bottom with the downrigger weight, and that's, that's key to this, is keeping our gear you know, within a couple, three feet of the bottom. So if you just put your gear down and just come out here and drive around, you're just about wasting your time if you don't continually follow that bottom contour. Now if the fish are up off the bottom though, it's not a, don't be afraid to make your adjustments and come up to them and, and uh, stay in that zone for a while. But like today, so far the only handful of fish that we've seen, they've been real close to the bottom within four to five feet. So, so that tells me that the mice shrimp didn't do a complete diurnal migration and uh, come to the surface to feed last night. They stayed deep. Uh, if they didn't, the fish would be scattered throughout the water column as they're dropping down as it gets daylight out. Well, this morning we're, we're out uh, targeting Chinooks. And the Chinooks, there used to be a fishery on this lake uh, a number of years ago, clear back in mid-2000s, was really the last time that they ever planted anything or, or put any type of, of Chinooks in here. And for a number of years, you know, all the way through the, uh, from mid 80s up till the early 2000s, they planted them. And there was some really nice fish, 25 plus pound Chinooks in here. But uh, since they quit planting them, all the fish that we've got in here right now are all natural spawn coming out of the Stahican. So these fish are some of the most phenomenal eating fish that you would ever eat. I mean, uh, <laughs> A Copper River sockeye has nothing on, on these Chinooks uh, coming out of here. And it's a, a very, very specialized fishery. And it's a lot of fun to uh, come out here and pick one up. It's a one fish limit uh, per person per day. And it has to be uh, over 15 inches, which generally we won't kill a, a small fish, you know, trying to make, get them into that bigger size. But uh, it is very, very specialized. Just because of the fact that there's not a lot of fish there like there used to be. So it's a lot of fun. In fact, that's how Joe came up. Uh, he, he helped us uh, develop that uh, 5.8 inch uh, Dodger. That was uh, something that he had been playing around with and really wanted. So he contacted us and, and we started playing around and I actually had a couple already <laughs> made up in that size. And uh, so that was one of the things that uh, that works extremely well out here is that 5.8 inch uh, double D Dodger. That broken mark, that's a king every time. This is where you can have a bit of a problem if you make too tight of a turn. But those outriggers help. Oh my a god, lot. tremendous. Well, you couldn't do it without it. No. Not, you couldn't have four, four downriggers on the bottom. Not at that depth. No. And occasionally I still get tangles, you know, especially if I'm making a turn and I get bit. Sometimes <laughs> the fish, you know, tangle up, but but uh, this this is a definite, a lot more productive way of fishing deep water uh, when you have to have all your gear, you know, within, you know, uh, bottom there. Within 20 to 30 feet of the bottom, you know, it's nice knowing that you can, you can uh, have controlled depth fishing with four rods instead of just two. And I'm covering an 80 foot path right here. This rod right here is 35 feet out that way and this rod on this side is 35 feet out that way. So I'm covering about an 80 to 85 foot path with four rods or five rods um, with four of them being close to the bottom. Even though you're only 10 feet apart out here with these rods being side to side, Part of the reason what Joe was talking about being, you know, 35 feet out at 120 feet back, 
is because of the fact of the uh, holes on the double D Dodgers. You put it in the, uh, one of the outside holes and it's like a side planer and it'll take your gear out to the side. And at the speed that he's traveling, Joe has uh, figured out that he's 35 feet out on each side. So he's covering an 80 to 85 foot you know, spread with four rods. Go ahead and drop it. And it's because of having those, those holes on the double D Dodger that helps create that or create that side planer action. Okay, we got a couple small ones on the graph and then some shrimp. Wherever we're seeing shrimp, we're seeing a few fish. So hopefully they'll, they'll turn on for us here. We're starting to get a lot of activity right now on the graph. We're coming onto a kind of, people have called it Joe's Ledge out here. I've caught a lot of kings on this, on this lower end here. Um, it's a kind of a feeding point for these fish. They will ambush the shrimp down on the bottom here, kind of corral them. So it's a good spot. Hopefully we'll get bit. We're on Lake Chelan targeting fantastic eating Chinook salmon that are this morning testing our patience and skill at deep trolling. Okay, Mark, go ahead and come up three, three seconds on that one. Okay, perfect. And sometimes we are successful chasing yeah, those yeah. suspended fish. But we're gonna be hit dragging we're, any yeah, second. Yeah, because we're coming up on well, this Well, not for long though, because I'm turn, gonna turn right now. You're gonna go left? Yeah. Come on, fish. Come on. Come on. Who's gonna get him? It's a king. It's a Chinook. Take it sweet. Keep you way outside. Way outside. It's a good one. You wanna clear some rods? Just this one. How about this, this nope. surface rod? Nope, it's fine. Okay. I'll show you what you're gonna do with it. Take it, you're gonna stick it in that hole. Don't move in with that line. Drop it there. It's really deep, so what we're doing is we'll just take our time and let that fish kind of slowly, gradually work its way up and out away from the boat. Huh? Is it a lake or is it a Chinook? Hard to tell. I mean, the if thing it is, it's so deep. If it comes to the surface, deep, it's a it, it, every time. It, 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 yeah, but he's not it's ripping fighting. line. No, it, it's not ripping line. I think line. it's a medium-sized lake okay, trout. Yeah. A little quicker, Never man. know, though. A yeah, lake that's trout. a Chinook. See, he's way yeah. up on the surface. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see him jump, you know, 150 feet behind the boat or porpoise. Yeah, sure. I mean, he's a good eater, though. He's not. He's he's bigger than a... That's bigger than an 18-incher. 18 18-incher. 18 oh, yeah. Nice. Anything over 10 pounds is, I consider, a big fish in Lake Chelan. And they're the, even the yeah. six, seven, eight pounders are a really nice fish. He's going to go crazy at the boat. He's already He's way, there. way up on top. That's how you know a Chinook, they come up. He's 200 feet out still with his line, and he's way up on the surface, and we hooked that fish at 218 feet deep. 214 to 218 feet deep. Let me know when that says 70 feet, Bob. Okay. This is when he's going to go crazy. Hang on, hang on, Joe. I know. I just don't I'll, want him I'll to go pop. this way. Is he going that way? Huh? Yes, he is. Get him on this side if you have to. There you go. Nice fish. Okay, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Got him. Nice. Nice fish. Good job. Five? Five, five and a half? Yeah. Aren't those pretty? Oh, they're, beautiful gorgeous, fish. they're gorgeous fish. Gorgeous fish. This, this is a landlocked Chinook. They don't have to go to the salt water like everybody thinks. This fish was born and bred right here in fresh water in Lake Chelan. It, uh, you know, came out of the Stahican River. These are all natural spawn fish. They're, they haven't been planted since uh, back in the mid 2000s. So all of these fish are absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Um, you know, you're not gonna get huge 30 pounders anymore. They used to catch a lot of 20 and 25 pound fish when they were planting it. But the fish seemed to uh, a 10 pound fish is a beautiful, beautiful fish. I mean, you can't get anything better than that out of Lake Chelan. But it's all freshwater uh, predicated. Did, did you notice when Joe went over and started working this side that we got bit? Hey, you know what? 
that's because I didn't want him to feel bad because the bite was a little bit tough earlier. You got a net handy, Joe? I do. I got two of them. Which side do you want a net on? Right here. Okay. What are you at? Net counter? 40. He's a little one. Yeah, it is. Ideally, if he just came off right now, it would be good. Come on this side. Oh, he's yeah. going to that side. That's a keeper. Out of that net, Mark. Can. There you go. Okay, lift. There you go. Nice. Oh, that's another. That's actually, a that's nice almost one. a clone. It's just a little bit thinner. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a keeper fish. That's yeah. a nice fish. That'll eat great. Yeah. Gonna hand me that net, Bob. That's a king. Uh, we got a snook on, I think. Little guy. He's not nothing fancy, but third one of the day. See some color. Yep. That's a smaller one. Got him. We might be able to let this one go, Joe. Pretty little fish. Beautiful. He hit the double D. This is a we caught the first one on the same setup. This is a second bite on this on this one for the day. And with a Joe's pink bait. Welcome back to Lake Chelan. I'm Justin Wolf. We have two beautiful schnook on ice, and they are incredibly good eating. Just ask the ducks. Pink or chartreuse bait on trolling flies behind Double D Dodgers is what's working. Let's take a quick look and then go after some of Chelan's West Slope cutthroat. Okay, behind the Double D Dodger, I like to use uh, my own setup, my own flies. I tie them all myself. Uh, they're just a streamer fly. Uh, but I do use a epoxy style head on them and, and uh, a double hook setup. And my bait, I put uh, the uh, chartreuse, luminous chartreuse, uh, uh, Pro Cure powder dye on it inside the bait. That's how I fish it. Well, we got three nice kings. Uh, we're gonna change it up here and we're gonna go try and do some West Slope cutthroat fishing uh, along a dock structure or towards a shallower water right now where they're holding. Um, we'll try Mill Bay um, and then uh, uh, kind of motor over there. It shouldn't take too long. There's been quite a bit of them in there. So one of the native species in Lake Chelan is the West Slope cutthroat trout. Um, and uh, in the years past, uh, the numbers of them really took a big plummet, big drop, either from uh, harvesting or, or something happened to them over harvesting. Well, the Department of Fish and Wildlife decided to uh, try to get the West Slope back in big numbers, back into the lake like they were back in the 20s and 30s. There was a lot of, a lot of them then. Um, so they've been stocking them and uh, they are doing very, very well. In my opinion, they're doing overly well, uh, but but uh, they're usually pretty plentiful along the dock areas and, and structure areas this time of the year. That's a nice one too. Yeah, it's that kind of, what do you call that, Bob? Is it water? Yeah, that's when we got a release. Fire tiger. Okay. He's got his adipose. And you know what's sad about it? It's a hatchery fish. It's been hatchery raised, but they only mark 80% uh, of them out of the ones that they release in here. Uh, and the reason why they don't mark them all is they want to have 20% uh, saved in case if the hatcheries get caught. So that's a male and he's got his adipose, so we're going to release him. There he goes. Yeah, it wasn't doing anything on that one, but this is what Joe was just getting bit on, was this color. We'll see. Okay. Well, Joe just caught one on a promise or on a crip lure, and I just caught one on a promise keeper. So we got uh, we got fish going on multiple uh, multiple lures, but it sure seems. That chartreuse color seems to be the, the the color that they're looking for. So I guess we'll just throw that up there for the time being. These uh, these fish seem to run in in uh, large groups. You know they're they're like a, a pack, and um, once you find fish, 
then uh, then you can really uh, really uh, work the fish over. But uh, it just depends on. Oh, just missed a fish! Holy cow! Almost hit Justin too. Um, it's just uh, one of those things that that uh, once once you find them, it's uh, it's a matter of uh, what you want to throw, and it's a good way to uh, test lures also. You find stuff that they like and stuff they don't like. But these these are all uh, you know pretty nice fish. You know you're talking about oh anywhere from 12 to that's uh, you know 14 inches. I mean that's a nice fish. I am letting it making the cast, letting it sink uh, three four feet, and then I'm just twitching it coming back in. Twitch, real couple turns. Twitch, real, missed one, just like that. Twitch. There he is. The limit here is, is the same same trout limit as as uh, reg, regular. Uh, your regular trout so it's a five fish limit and uh you know a lot of people come down here on the dock certain times of the year and you can you can really catch a lot of fish on the floor. <laughs> kite been able to tell yet whether that one's clipped if he would hold still i think he's clipped yep that fish is fin clipped we can keep this one He'll come right back for it a lot of times. See? <laughs> there, you got it. Oh, no, no, I got Bob. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's like... I I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.